Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's the uh, the cost of cost of doing business. I'm like, if you got a asset, if you own an asset, right? Shit, make that thing work. Exactly. Make that thing work, yo. Exactly. Hey, you know what, man? I just love this new economy because the definition of an asset is changing overnight. Yeah. You know? Yep. No doubt about it. Definition. No doubt about it. I'm like, uh, I don't think new entrepreneurs, like you're like, I consider you an old dinosaur. <laughs> I don't think yeah. new entrepreneurs, I don't think they have a clue. How good they got it, Chris. Yep. Good they got it, dude. I'm like, yeah, you. I mean, just to just the way you receive information, right? I'm like, shit, y'all have no clue. Yep. The stuff yep. we had to go through. Chris, you know what? I was calling you all day. I wanted to talk to you about some stuff, man. Well, we'll talk about that off camera. I've been wanting to, I mean, I, I called you like three times. Round up, you want Chris, you want to tell them what you had to do today? Or you want to, is that personal? I don't want to get pushed too hard. It's not it's not too personal, but my uncle and your uncle sent me a letter yesterday. You said that first thing out of your mouth when I called you. And if, for those of you that have not been in business for yourself, our uncle is Uncle Sam. <laughs> so I had a I got a nice little love letter from Uncle Sam yesterday. That, yeah, so yesterday was the 27th of January. They mailed this letter to me on the 28th of December. So it took a mere month to get to me. And the letter requested, but it, 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 it's nothing major. It's um, it's not even an audit. It's a proposal is how they, they presented it. It's a proposal based on two years ago tax return. There were some numbers that don't add up. And they needed my response in writing back to them by yesterday. So as you can understand, that's nearly impossible for me to receive the letter and have it returned to them on the same day that it was due. So I spent two hours and 12 minutes on hold this afternoon waiting on an operator at the good old Internal Revenue Service. And I finally got a hold of somebody. And uh, I got 30 days to respond. So, you know, wish me luck. I don't, I don't see it being anything major, but, you know, I talked to this guy. He was a, he was a real person. I mean, I appreciated that he just talked to me. Um, and for those of you that are intimidated, don't be intimidated. If you, man, if you run your business and you know your numbers are right, I mean, this guy's not out to get me. He's just sitting there pushing paperwork around. So long story short is I have 30 days to respond and, uh, you know, we should be fine. You know what's weird? I would yeah. love the IRS. I'm just like I've been. I've been paying my taxes. I've been doing the numbers. I'm like, no. Yeah. You sleep better at night when you just pay Caesar. You know. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, is, is questions arise when you when you learn how to allocate your funds. Mm -hmm. You know. A little flag will always go off in the system to say, "Hey, let's let's check this guy and let's make sure he's doing what he says he's doing." So yeah, I'm not worried about that. That's crazy. So, round up greetings, class. Greetings. This is uh, I am Chris Haskins. My mission and ministry is to raise your financial literacy through real estate investing and entrepreneurship. I hope this new camera is looking pretty nice on on the on the, on the airwaves. So today I was talking to Chris. Uh, well, maybe it was yesterday. I'm like, man, what value can I bring into the Roundup family as we close out January? Can you believe that January is gone already, buddy? I know, man. I felt the same way when I looked. I was like, wow, that's gone. Man, it's something. Wow. So Roundup, let me do this real quick. Registration for the finally, it's here. The foreclosure summit is here. I am excited about bringing that to you guys. So we'll be talking about, about more about that as we, oops, as we get into our training today. Hold up, that was a long one. Round up, come on in. We're going to be talking about tonight three ways Chris and I finance real estate without going to the bank. 
I'm like, I'm sick of people thinking they got to go to the bank. So yes, today I'm officially opening up the foreclosure summit round up February 3rd. I'm going to show you, it's going to be a step-by-step -step training. You're going to have all day with me all day. Isn't that cool? Hanging out with your boy. I'm, I'm excited to be able to hang out with you. So round up, what we're going to do is, um, can you hear me, Chris? Yep. Okay. I'm trying to figure this thing out. I got my boy, Bill Brunchick. He's a real estate attorney out in Denver. We're going to show you how to locate, do the research, how to bid, how to win. And then how do you go to closing on these foreclosure auctions? You got to learn this stuff. If you plan on bidding in the upcoming, in my opinion, soon, I've been doing this since 2004. So uh, the market can only go one way. It's up 11% in a year, in a year. So that means uh, prayerfully it will sustain for quite uh, for a little bit longer, but eventually the market has to come down. So get prepared. I know I'm going to be prepared, obviously hanging out with Birch, buying foreclosures. So the link for that is in the video description. If you want to learn more about that, we'll be putting all that together over the coming days and the early bird registration open up now. It will end uh, on next Sunday. So thank you guys for supporting us. Let's get some foreclosures together. Chris Birch, so why would we care about buying houses without the bank? I love your story about being bankable because I, I too share it. Yeah, it's just that it you can only speak from experience on it. It's dealing or knowing what you have to deal with, with the traditional lending institutions, the banks, mm -hmm. the criteria, the documents, the tax returns, the profit and loss statements, all this stuff. And then you can still get turned down and yeah. usually won't even get approved for, well, you won't get approved for a hundred percent. You know, when people say, oh, they, they financed my house for 30 years. Well, you did come with like three and a half to five percent down. It's not like they gave you the whole 30 year mortgage. Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah, just the, the, the <laughs> honestly, it's just a pain in the butt to deal with them. Yes, yeah, challenging. And at the end of the day, it's their rules, their money. Mm -hmm. yep. so me, when I was starting out back in, I'm just like. Let's just talk about 0304. I'm just like, how am I going to be able to buy these houses? Even if, even if uh, for investment property back then, you had to have 80%. And that really hasn't changed a lot for investment purposes. You know, you, it's hard to build a real estate empire on owner occupant houses. We're talking about buying and selling as many houses unlimited. There's two ways to do this business the conventional and the unconventional. And you get to choose which one. You get to choose, right? So today we're talking about unconventional stuff. Uh, hopefully, uh, prayerfully, three things we're going to talk about. One, first one is business credit lines. I don't want to stay there but so long. And I know Chris has a little bit more information on that with Fund and Grow. I'm going to put that link in the video description if you want to get qualified for some business credit lines. Second one is going to be IRAs. That's kind of where I live. Third is going to be 401ks. Is that okay, Chris? That sounds like a plan to me. Yeah, man. I love talking to you because there's no theory here. There's no... I read about it or I saw it done. Nope. Ain't none of that. I just nope. don't have time for that. And it's crazy because I still get, both of us still get people that, and I'm not saying that's you watching now. Mm -hmm. Some people really don't believe. What? Well, let's talk about, man, before we get into, let's talk about doubt, Chris, because I, I, I used to live in a world of doubt. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think that you, you know, you hear, the, you hear about this, buy a house without credit, without uh, using your own money. Yep. Go there. Did you have any doubt about it? Oh, well, yeah, of course. There's always doubt on something that you don't know about. Um, I remember early on, you know, these these seminars, these these, you know, um, come to this hotel ballroom and we're going to teach you how to, you know, find, locate and purchase properties and you don't have to use your own money. And really, a lot of them, there were some good ones. I, you know, I, I won't name call on any of them. There were some good ones. Majority of them were trying to upsell you on their package. So, you know, you went to this free seminar and this guru stood up on stage and then you realize it wasn't even the guru. It was someone from his team that got up on stage. Um, so there was a lot of that going around. So that that raised a fair amount of doubt with me. Um, and then not understanding it. I mean, we're all... If, we, if we're not raised with the financial literacy to understand conventional versus where we live now, 
it's not taught, you know, it really is not taught. Mm-mm. I mean, my, my own bank, we were talking about the big banks a minute ago. My own bank didn't understand how I was able to purchase an investment property and never put it in my name. <laughs> they just, they don't do it. They don't live in that world. Yeah. You know, it's a cool world, isn't it? Yes, sir. I'm glad you live in it now, brother. Yeah, man. I mean, it, it was, it was through trials and tribulation, like anything, you know, you hear about it, but then when you do it, you put pen to paper, you're like, wow, you can do that. You can really do it. Round up. You can do this business. Repeat after me. I can do this business the right way, the right way. Don't be like me going out there and guaranteeing a bunch of debt and doing all that stuff. So Chris, I don't want to stay here for so long because the meat of this stuff is going to be about IRAs and 401ks because yeah. in my opinion, that's where you really just skyrocket. Yeah, That's where you just, I'm just, I'm just like, it's unlimited. So yeah. the business credit lines, I know you got, uh, you deal with some of that stuff. You want to just stay there for a minute, round up. And if you want to look into more information on that, it's in the uh, video description below. Yeah. Cost you nothing to apply. They'll give you all the criteria um, as, as far as what you will need to get the maximum um, line of credit that they can get for you. Uh, I've had great experience. I've had a lot of comments on the last you know, couple months, a lot of people asking questions. Um, I know Chris always promotes it. We're here now. Put the questions in the chat. I mean, we don't mind talking about this stuff. That's why we're sharing the information. Uh, and then for the naysayers out there, I think only the only way someone could be a naysayer uh, about not just fund and grow, but a naysayer about how we don't operate like the rest of the world is the only naysayer is someone who's never done it before. Because mm-hmm. once you do it and you realize how to do it, 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 proof is in the pudding. It's right there in front of you. To round up these business credit lines, I'm just going to show you here. If you want to qualify, go through there. Uh, fund and grow. They loan you money. They pull a credit. They pull your credit, but it's not based on your on your personal credit. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't uh, report to your personal credit, y'all. Yeah. So why not at least take a look at it? Take a look at it. So Chris has got over a hundred thousand. We're already at two point six nine million million right now with the Roundup family. I've seen it done. I've seen people qualify for this all around the country. And this is something that even if you don't qualify as much as Chris did, here's the thing: you can use that. For a down payment, y'all. You can use it for a down payment or for the construction. Yep. Doesn't necessarily have to be for all that. So Fund and Grow has given us a discount because we do so much, we do millions of dollars with these dollars with these people. So why not give it a try? Just see how much you qualify for in the link uh, in the video description. Uh Chris, you want to say anything about that before we leave it alone? I mean, it, yeah. you can use it. Go ahead. You 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 can use it for anything that your business does. So if you have an existing business and you get approved for funding, that doesn't mean you have to use it within your entity that you you qualified under. I could use it and draw from it and invest in one of Chris's properties in one of his rehabs or, you know, I could start a new entity within my business with those funds. So there, there's really there's no there's no. Uh, you know, discretionary. There's no one sitting there watching. How are you spending this money? It, it was already approved when they gave you the funding. So it, it's at your discretion on how you use it. So the first one, business credit lines. OK, they give you these cards. You can pull the money off of it. You can buy real estate. You can finance construction. You can put earnest money down. You can hire contractors. I mean, as long as they take credit or you can work with another company, Plastic, that pulls the money off. Yep. Roundup, don't let not have here's the thing how many times have you heard chris mm-hmm. if i had 25 cents if i only had the money i yep. would do this if i only had the money yep yep all the time yep. give it a shot y'all give it a shot what the hell you got to lose okay so i don't want to stay there too long because uh business credit lines are are one thing and they now they do pull your personal credit but it doesn't report all right so if you need yep. 10 20 000 for a down payment there's a fee. We've negotiated a discount for you. Chris, who are, who are those business credit lines for? So I know some people would like them. They may not qualify. What's that? Tell me about the mentality of people that can use those in your opinion. In my, in my opinion, 
the ideal candidate for business lines of credit is someone who already understands how to manage their business, how to manage their money. And I'll say that it actually makes perfect sense because if if you haven't been able to properly manage it, you probably don't have that good credit that you probably won't qualify for these business lines. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's uh it's proven to me, um, you know, the the business that I qualified under has been in business since 2005. Um, my credit is decent. Um, and, you know, it's a it's an easy, simple system. Costs nothing to apply. You'll go through the criteria. They'll let you know um, what you qualify for. And, you know, I don't know why you wouldn't, but um, you don't have to take all of them, you know. You can choose what you want. If you only needed 20 and you get approved for 30, I mean, it can't hurt to take the 30, but if you just want the 20, take the 20. Okay, so business credit lines, that link, get rolling. Get, if you if, if you need financing now or today, though, that's that's going to be the fastest way because these these other stuff, the 401k and, and uh, IRA, it's going to take a little time. It's going to mm -hmm. take some training. So I, I didn't want to stay I didn't want to stay on the business lines because that's just a apply boom these dudes have got a system people i've seen people qualify and get in two weeks get fifty thousand. so all right chris how long did it take you from my application to approval was about three weeks see yeah, yeah. three weeks I imagine yeah. nothing all right okay so this is the good part and get your questions in the chat round up don't forget as we are here i'm opening up the summit, the foreclosure summit. Uh, let me make sure I gotta keep letting you guys know. February third, y'all. February third, the foreclosure summit is here. The link to get registered up and for the early bird registration is in the video description. We're gonna be go going over all how to find, locate, bid, and win and close your next house at the foreclosure auction. And we'll be featuring my boy, real estate attorney Bill Bronchick too. We're gonna have a good time all day with me, y'all. Get to hang out with me all day. Five hours. Or well, we might just go until, right? What else are we doing? Sitting in the house, right? What else are we doing? Shit. So, Chris. Yes, sir. I'm going to stay with you. Yeah. Which one you want to do first? Do, 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 do. Either one. Yeah, either one. Let's go top or bottom. Do IRA. The only reason I put IRA first because that's what I know, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Roundup. You all ready? Let's do this. IRAs individual retirement accounts now i'm gonna to have to work this for some of you because if you're anything like me i was like man i'm just going to do these deals i ain't worried about going talk to nobody about no ira 401k i'll wait till i get into the business five six years then i'll figure out some of that finance and stuff wrong attitude oh lord it's the wrong attitude for me i should have been trying to figure out that stuff now and then implement it over time. See, what happens when you're just looking for houses, you are training the universe and your mind. You're magnetizing your mind to attract houses. Then you got all these houses coming in for me. I got. I remember one time I had five under contract, no money. So real estate is all about two wheels to constantly crank. Let me see if y'all can do this. Can y'all do one forward and one backwards? Can you do that, Chris? It took me years to do that. I don't even want to try. Most people do like this. Right. They get all, yeah. I can do one forward and one backward. A man taught me how to do that a long time ago. Real estate is two wheels, y'all. Money, financing. Money, financing. You have to do them simultaneously, simultaneously, simultaneously if you want to be uh, uh, successful, have a longevity real estate career, y'all, because money goes hand in hand. So with these IRAs, you are you going to look into something called a self-directed Roth IRA, a self-directed Roth IRA. All right. Individual retirement account. It allows us when it says self-directed, it is exactly what it is. It allows you as opposed to going down there and talking to the man in a suit. <clears throat> Mr. What do they call fund manager? Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Custodian. Mr. Custodian. Yeah. Every time I talk to them fools, man, I just feel like they just got, they know exactly where they want to put my money, Chris. You have more experience dealing with these big houses than me. As far as the paper assets, them plugging oh, yeah. and placing you into that stuff. Tell us about your experience with them, Chris. So, before, go ahead. Were you, you were doing traditional stuff.
before you got into what well, I guess everybody does traditional before they get into the unconventional stuff. Yeah. Um, as, as far as the IRA is what you're referencing. Yeah. Well, you, right. Yeah. Because you. Yeah. Let's do with that. Go ahead. Yeah. So. Initially, I was brought to the IRA spectrum. From a traditional Roth IRA. From that, I learned. Hey there, Chris, tell me about your experience with your tra traditional before we even get here, because no doubt a lot of our viewers are in the traditional world, right? Yep. So my traditional at the time, it's gone up a little bit now. At the time, you could only contribute fifty five hundred dollars per year. It's now gone up to six thousand. I believe it was in the 2018, 2019 uh, tax law. Uh, but that's your maximum annual contribution. Mm -hmm. It's now $6,000. Okay. So at the time, uh, I asked my CPA, is there anything else that I can do? Now, keep in mind, the reason I'm asking these questions is because I have a earned income problem. Right. I'm Tell making, me about that. I am making too much profit. I own the business as a single member. So on the federal tax line, the net of the company is a pass through to me as the single member. Right. right? Gotcha. So to use the term freely, I was getting hammered with with personal income taxes. So I was looking for ways to strategize to be smarter with my money, not to avoid taxes. Can't do that. Right? Anyway. You can't avoid taxes. I wanted to be smarter with it. So I understood the traditional Roth is pre-taxed, right? So it's taxed when it, when you contribute, that money is already taxed. Gotcha. Well, as that money grows in your IRA, you do not pay taxes on the gain as it grows. So I want to say two words. We two words that you have to understand, y'all, when you're dealing with uh, IRAs and 401ks. Chris, you already said it. Mm -hmm. Contribution, gain. Yep. It's so ironic. I remember reading Robert Kiyosaki's books before. He was like, "Uh, you can move money one way, and the IRS will look at it and tax it a certain way, and you can move the same money a different way and have no taxes on it." Yep. Isn't that amazing? All right, I don't want to get too excited about that, but okay, go ahead. So you pre-tax dollars. So put yep. it in this we're still in the traditional world, or we're we talking yep. about the self so the raw traditional. So right. CPA, CPA at the time said, Well, Chris, you could do what is called a SEP IRA, SEP, SEP IRA. With the SEP IRA, as long as I, the business owner, and all of my employees, which thankfully I did not have employees, I had contracted workers. As long as I agree, I can contribute up to 25% of my earned income into a SEP IRA. Gotcha. Right? So let's just say it's, let's do a round number, $100,000 $100, net income. I can contribute up to $25,000 into my SEP IRA. So at the time, great idea, right? Gotcha. Contribution. Mm -hmm. Yep, contribution. Sounded like a great idea. I learned in the last few years, not the greatest idea. Why is that? Because the SEP, the SEP IRA is pre-taxed on, on self-employment at 15.5% before I contribute that 25000 mm -hmm. Right? So looking at it from that perspective, I said, there's got to be something else. Like, dude, there's... There's something in this universe, in the tax code, the tax laws, that these fat cat Wall Street guys, these big time developers, there's something that they're doing that's not illegal, but they've, they've been informed and they strategize on what you just said, how to move money around the same way you move money in traditional, you move money around where you don't get penalized on the game. And that opened me up to the world of self-directed. Gotcha. Self-directed. Yep. Now, Chris, let's stay here for I have so many words to write down. All right. Chris.
Chris, tell me about the world of self-directed. I used to use the, the phrase, imagine when you were a little kid and you went to the puppet show and you saw the little dancing characters, but there was someone behind the screen that made all of that happen. So much, there, even, all right, the Wizard of Oz, there was, a, there was a person behind, right, behind the drapes that was orchestrating everything. And literally, that is what self-directing is. Wow. It's, yeah, it's awesome. You're deep, man. we got 100 people on here. Roundup, thank you for hanging out with us tonight. We're talking about financing your next real estate pur purchases, okay? The first one we already went over, we used this Fund and Grow. There's a link in the video description for that. Get signed up for business credit lines. Number two, IRA, self-directed Roth IRAs. Okay, so we're going to give you some strategies. Let's get into the meat of this stuff, Chris. We're going to have to work this. If you're looking for any type of wealth, Chris, how many hours did you study before you actually were so like, this is for me? Uh, with the self-directed? Yeah. I watched a bunch of videos. We're talking I, bought, about I bought a book and then I talked to three different custodians, mm -hmm. which are the institutions in which we use to self-direct our, our retirement. Give me a time frame on that. A couple of weeks? Yeah, at most a couple of weeks. Well, I'm, I'm looking at you like you are not the average Joe going to work, having to deal with nine to five. You're able to, you're an entrepreneur, so you can kind of, mm -hmm. so uh, let's just say that for the average person, you're going to have to take some time. Well, let me, uh, Chris, you just did this. What would you say to the average, for the average person, they're going to have to, uh, what, what, what type of time frame are, do they need to look into this so they can kind of comprehend this stuff? For the average person that's working a nine to five, coming home to the wife and kids or the husband and kids. Coming from the world of go talk to Mr. Yep. Asset manager, planner, listen to all that googly glop. I'll give you a perfect <laughs> example. The custodian who managed my uh, SEP and my traditional Roth, mm -hmm. I contacted him first and asked him about self-directing and he didn't know what I was talking about. How'd that go? How'd that conversation go? He didn't he didn't know. And when I heard him say, I don't really know much about it, I knew it was time for me to figure out how to get my money out. And what we now understand is roll that over into a self-directed. Good for you, Chris. I'm so proud of you, man, doing this stuff. And how long have you been self-directed, brother? 2018. Two years for you. Okay. Yep. Round up, get your questions in a box. So this is how this works, y'all. Let's get to it. Now, I'm not talking about you can do this for you mm -hmm. or you can do this for somebody else. Yeah. Doesn't even have to be you. I can't tell you how many, I can't count how many people that have contacted us. We roll their money over from a traditional IRA into a self directed Roth IRA. Contributions are taxed, gain is not taxed. Okay. So we've got 110 people round up. Thank you for joining us. All right. So I just look at when I think about money, right? It's, I just think about buckets. Mm -hmm. Where am I storing money, whether it's mine or somebody else's? Yep. Another one of our lenders, private lenders. Yep. So with self-directed Roth IRA, you're going to have to have a custodian. Okay, You got to have a custodian. Chris knows more about the 401k, which we'll get to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. The custodian is going to hold your money. You contact them to get the money out. How does it work, y'all? So the, the IRA can actually own real estate. It's owning real estate. So everything that comes out, here's your IRA, right? Say you got 100000 in here. It comes out, it buys the house. All the money from the flip goes back into the IRA tax-free. Now, Chris talked about contributions. I spell that right. Contributions are taxed. Gains are not taxed. You want to talk about that a little bit, Chris, before I get into it? Yeah. Um, I guess the simplest way to put it is when you make your contribution to your IRA, whether it's traditional or self-directed initially, that money has already been taxed when you put those in. funds into the bucket. Already taxed. Yep. The gain is the return that your IRA gets from the investments that your IRA makes. So as it grows, as you get a return on your investment, that is not taxed within your retirement. As it grows. Yep. 
I know my round that people are saying, but Chris, if I do a deal in the IRA, what about me getting the money? I need some of the money. That's where we're going to get to that too. Yep. We're going to get to that too. I got you covered. Y'all Y'all know I've done the research already. I've been doing this since the 2004. We got you covered. That's why you're here. All right. So you open up your self-directed Roth IRA. I'm going to disclose who I use, not because I love them, but just because it's who I use. It's a company called Equity Trust Company. Make sure you please get your notepad on this stuff. We're talking about the path of wealth. You have to choose. If you want to be wealthy, it's a choice. I was thinking today as I'm at the gym, I want to ask Chris. I'm like, it's a choice. You can choose to be broke by not doing the things that rich people do, your habits. Yep. It's a choice. Like, do you wake up? You know, do you early? Do you grind? Do you have your money in this? Like, these are the tools and the loopholes that the wealthy use, y'all. Do you have to choose? Are you going to do it or not? I don't know. I, all the time, my clients are like, should I get it? Should I do this? Should I do that? I'm like, look, this is what the wealthy do. This is what we do. Are you going to do it or not? You're going to do it or not. Yep. Right. And it's Chris, Chris, and as a matter of fact, this is how our paths crossed. Yep. Because Chris, I mean, you just have a wealth mentality. Where'd you get that from? No doubt you didn't have it being at ODU on as a young bug doing those party yeah. shows. You, you, you kind of I've said it before, you develop a a muscle, right? You develop a muscle based on your experiences. You calculate those either fumbles or stumbles or whatever occur. And you you learn you learn either you're always gonna have you know a mess up you're gonna have something at some point nothing is perfect but you learn not to waste a lot of time dwelling on the wrong stuff or yep. the trip or the stumble you focus on what works yep. you know sweet so roundup you get your IRA and by the way who do you who are you using Chris you want to tell my roundup is who you use yeah so I. Solo 401k is with directed IRA and my traditional are with Millennium Trust. Millennium Trust. You want to say it again so people that didn't hear yep. you? Directed IRA is the Solo 401k custodian and Millennium Trust. And as Chris said, I'm not in love with either one of them, mm -hmm. but they work for me. I wanted to direct, self-direct my uh, SEP and my Roth and the institution's uh, real estate investment trust that I wanted to invest that retirement into, they required me to use Millennium Trust. I don't love them. I didn't choose them. That's just who they use. Gotcha. Is that me beeping or you? That's me. Let me hit. That's actually the alarm. Round up. Thank you for joining us. Uh, open registration today. Registration opens today for the Foreclosure Summit, February 13th. Got my boy, Bill Bruncher, coming on with us. It's an honor to have y'all. Honor to have you. All day, you can hang out with me, 12 to 5. We're going to go over how to locate, how to bid, how to research, uh, how to close these foreclosure auctions. You got it, Chris? Yeah, man. It's really, really windy here. And it's, uh, yeah, so the, the wind is blowing on the garage door, and it kept setting the alarm off. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Got your IRA set up. How does this work, y'all? So the IRA, here's your bucket of money, right? It will go and fund your deal. Well, let me do this. Let me rewind a little bit, Chris. Oh, that ain't gonna work. Oh, there you go. Thanks for your time tonight, bud. Not a problem, man. I, I honestly, I, I am not a financial advisor. I'm sure we probably should have disclosed that, but I am. Go ahead, hit it. Hit it. Go ahead, let them know. Yeah, so I'm not providing financial advice, nor is Chris. We are simply sharing with you what works for us. Yeah. The money comes out of your IRA, right? Buys, fix up, sells house. All the profits, let's say you want to buy and hold, all the rents, let's say you want to do an owner finances or do a lease option, that down payment will go back into your IRA as a gain tax-free, y'all, tax-free. Now, unless you can't take it out to your, what, 59, I don't know, 
60, what is it, 59 yeah. and a half? 59 and a half is when you can start. But and why it, would you want to do that? So anyway, we, right. you want to, this is generational stuff we're really talking about here. But once you get, you do a few of these and somebody might say, well, Chris, I don't have a hundred thousand in my IRA. That's where you use it for down payment, y'all, for down payment. And we'll get to the moving parts in a minute uh, because Chris's moving parts on the 401k are different from the IRA. Mm -hmm. So the moving, say you got, uh, let's say you have 50 or 30. So you can use, I'm I'm just making it, let me make it easy. I'm doing 50-50. Your IRA can bring 50%. And then you can bring 50%. Or if you have uh, uh, some type of a, a loan or another private investor, you can borrow that too. But the money will have to go back into the IRA. So there's a whole lot of different ways. What they call it is co-investing. Co-investing. You're not necessarily doing a partnership. How many of these have I done? I could not tell you guys. Because I started out with $2,000. My first, I've only, Chris, do you know I've only done one contribution to my IRA? That's amazing. You don't you don't you don't have the earned income to need to make that con- contribution. Yeah, I don't have there one contribution. I had earned. Earn, I think you got to have earned can, earned income to open it, I believe. Mm-hmm. I made one contribution back in 2006. All of my other money that has grown in my IRA has been all gains. It's been all gains. Contribution is taxed. Gains are not taxed. So I've got deals going in and out, in and out, in and out. All right. So let me stay here one more time. I'm gonna uh, you can do with the house, right? That's one thing. Say if you uh you want to set up somebody else, ma pa, they have a traditional, you're gonna flip them over to a self-directed. You're going to turn them into a note. Now, this is going to be synonymous with you or somebody else. Say you want to loan money out, right? See, Chris is one of our private lenders. He will loan money to us and we'll pay him a high rate of return. The money will come out of your IRA to fund that borrower. That borrower will make payments back into your IRA. Once again, it's tax free, y'all. So with the IRA, I have to con- I have to communicate with my custodian. I got to fill out some paperwork, send in the notes, send in the deed of trust. If it's secured by real estate, they have to approve it. So that's one of the drawbacks with using an IRA like I use. So, Chris, go ahead and talk about uh, the 401k that you have set up now. Yeah. So I'll eat my water. I'll be right back. Yep. So the difference is I have a solo, solo 401k and I'm going to go over <clears throat> Briefly, I have a list here that I'll go over with you guys. The qualification for the solo 401k, it must you must be self-employed with no full-time employees, right? So for me in my print business, that's fine because the people who work in my business are actually 1099 contracted workers. So they're not they're I don't I don't file a W-2 with them. I am the only employee in my print business. Now, what's great about the Solo 401k is in last year, 2020, the maximum annual contribution is $57,000. Now, of course, you're going to have to make a lot of earned income to be able to contribute that much. The coming year is actually going up. Maximum contribution in the solo 401k in 2021 is going to be $58,000. The cool part here with the solo 401k is that I actually am not only the treasurer and trustee of it, I'm also the custodian of it. So I actually have check writing abilities. So when when my uh, custodian directed IRA set this up for me, they went and filed with the IRS so that my solo 401k actually has an EIN number, a tax ID number. I does too. IRA, the IRA does too. Okay. So I take that to the bank. I open up a bank account as Chris, the trustee of his solo 401k, and I have check writing abilities against it. I don't have to request it from my custodian. With the solo 401k, I have check writing abilities, which is wonderful. And I can do the same thing um, 
Same thing as Chris mentioned with the with the IRA. It's it's almost identical. Um, you are the puppeteer managing your retirement. Gotcha. You know. So the di- the main difference with this four hundred one k y'all and the Roth and IRA. I mean, I'm at this new camera. Y'all bear with me trying to figure out how to work this dang thing. Chris doesn't have to talk to nobody. Chris. Like for me, when I got to do a deal, I got to fill out paperwork, got to scan it in, email it in. They got to approve it. They like it. They want like all docs. Tell me about one of your deals, Chris. Tell me about just how does it look? Like that's how mine looks. How does yours look? You want to sketch it out? Yeah, let's do it. Right. I'm just saying that with, with the E, how you can, I'm just like, you have, you are your custodian. I am my custodian. It still has to be within a brokerage that manages it. I do pay a minor annual fee, but you're going to pay an annual fee anywhere. Um, And basically I fill out a quarterly report of what I did in my solo 401k. Gotcha. Gotcha. So um, I will say the reason there is a, there is a specific reason why I still have my Roth and my SEP is you cannot roll those over into a solo 401k. Mm. nor can you roll over an existing employer's 401k unless the employer, whoever you work for, agrees <laughs> that you can roll it over. Most of them don't. But really? Yeah, most I've heard. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, most of them don't. Yeah. That's outside of my world. But a lot of people will probably fall in that bucket, won't they? Yeah, potentially. Potentially, but you as an employee have the right if you want to contribute to your employer 401k. So you could opt not to and then contribute to your own solo. Yep. Chris, in your opinion, you've been an entrepreneur. You know, for me, I just, man, it was always best for me to handle my own stuff. We've got 115 people. Chris, I just didn't fit inside the box of going to, I tried it, man, you know, using these these brokerage houses. Mm-hmm. Just never worked out for me. Is it? Uh, what's been your experience? I I have not had a good experience. I thought that a you know whatever I don't want to name brand them, but the TD Ameritrade's the whatever the traditional, traditional been there IRA you know audience been there. I was paying more in fees, transactional fees God. than my IRA was receiving as a gain. That's embarrassing, man. I looked at I was like, dude, I didn't have a lot of money in it. I was only doing the, the at the time, like 5500 a year to the IRA that I was able to contribute. Yeah. But like, I'm paying three, four hundred bucks a year in fees, and I'm only gaining three, four hundred bucks. <laughs> like, no, nah, this, this isn't working for me. No. Round up, I'm telling y'all, for me, it's just like, yeah, well, so with the, we're just two entrepreneurs. You know, yep. this is informational only. We're not giving you any type of investment advice. We're not attorneys. We're not accountants. No legal advice. Okay. This is just strictly information. Yep. So, Chris, I know you got that. Man, you've already done a deal. So, what I mean, I, I don't, I'm not counting your money. I kind of know you personally. Yep. You want to give me so this is your 401k? Yep. Did you do a loan? Did you do a house? What'd you do? Uh, so, I have done stocks. Okay. The money came out. Yep. So I can, as the check writer, I can then authorize a wire transfer from my 401k straight to my E-Trade account. Mm-hmm. And I can take those funds in my E-Trade account, di- you know, invest them in stocks. And as I sell those stocks, the gains, I can now transfer those gains back into my 401k. I'm just using this as paper. This yep. paper could be stock. It could be a right. note. Yep. It could be a pro- yeah. Well, let's just uh, promise or it could be a note, a loan, or a stock. Anything that's paper, y'all. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I don't know you did that. You never talked to me about that. Yeah. So I, I've done that. Okay. Now your other piece of paper is a car, an that's auto. Right. So pre-COVID, I went online on a Saturday at lunchtime to the local car auction, and I bought a pretty decent pickup truck. It was about 
3500 bucks. Didn't need much work, but I, in, in my immediate neighborhood where my print business is, there's a lot of auto mechanics who I know I, I print their business cards. I had him do a once over. We put new brake pads on it, new wiper blades, changed all the fluids. It was about 800 bucks by the time we were done. Mm -hmm. I put it, put it back on. So now I bought it from the funds that are in my solo 401k. I bought it and then I posted it on offer up had about 10 people inquire about it and about a week later sold it for 6,000. Sweet. So like 22, 2300 bucks in you know, a week and a half. Buy and low selling high. Yeah. Went right back into uh, my solo 401k. So now that, that actually has me think of a good point that I will mention. I was instructed that I can only do that a few, a few times a year at most because I was the person doing it, right? Yeah, not a dealer. Right. So then that it become they, they consider that flipping in your IRA and you can't do that. That's a prohibited transaction is what they would call it. Gotcha. So I backed away from it a little bit, but then consulted. I can pay a guy a hundred bucks to go buy it for me. And then he has to take it to the auto mechanic. He has to bring it back and put it on offer up, but I just pay him a fee. And then I'm not the worker bee. That's crazy, man. Right? I mean, it's no different than real estate. Yes, you can use your IRA or your 401k to purchase the real estate, but you better not get caught being over there with a hammer in your hand. You cannot, right. you cannot do that because that's considering like self-serving. You can't you can invest in things, but you can't be the worker bee that makes the gain back into your retirement. Yeah. You you it. Good point, Chris. Good point. So there's all type of little, I don't know where they come up with these rules from, to be honest. All type of little nuances that you have to follow. Mm -hmm. But it's worth it if you have paid no taxes. Tax, ex tax exempt from doing this stuff. Okay. So, uh, Chris, you got... Paper assets, gang going back in there. Car, gang going in there. Yep. This box here, matter of fact, let's just do this. Let's just put a question mark. You decide. You decide, y'all. And there are some things you cannot buy. I don't know what they are. You can get them all at the website. Yep. You decide, Roundup, what do you want to invest in? And let me tell you what happens when you open up one of these accounts, y'all. Uh, for me, I'm like, I know I've got a fee. It starts off small, right? The more money you get in there, it gets, it gets, it gets bigger, right? When I opened up my Roth IRA roundup, it pulled me, it made me invest because I knew if I didn't, I started, I put $2,000 back when I had nothing, right? I put two grand in there. I'm like, God, if I put this money in here, I'm paying three, whatever a year. If I don't do anything in it in five years, all the money will be gone. So I knew it forced me to take action for myself. Right. It made me go out there. So when you open up these things, you don't have a Schwab or Fidelity working on your behalf. By default, it makes you take action. You have to take action or you just whap every year. Whap, putting out fees, just putting out fees. Chris, did it make you take action? Immediately. As soon as I looked at the school, well, as soon as I started doing my research on I didn't even know what self-directed was called. I just mm -hmm. knew there was something that these fat cats were doing. I like that. Right? There was something that they were doing. And, uh, you know, after doing my research, working with you on some stuff, it's like, wow. I hate to be shoulda, coulda, woulda guy, but I sure wish I shoulda, coulda, woulda 10 years ago. Yeah, something. You know? But, like you said, do it now. There's you no jumped on it quick, dude. Yeah. You jumped. You was like... I think you called equity too, right? It just took them, they didn't move too slow for you, didn't they? They moved too slow. I was trying to get out of it, man. They were, they were, we're having problems. They, I guess because it's considered a security. Yeah. It's, it, it requires a whole different slew of paperwork, and you have to have a securities banker that has the security endorsement. So it was just, yeah, it was. Yeah. These fools. Yeah. No. And I mean, like for you, once you get it in there, you understand how your custodian works. You are you now know what to bring them. You know mm -hmm. what they want. 
Yeah. Wow. So roundup, I got I've got notes with men. My IRA owns rental property. I have co-investing where the rents come in. The people they bring us a money order. One goes to the IRA. One goes to us. We use our IRA. I promise you, just it's just like a bucket. It is your bank. It is your bank. Why not be? I was thinking last night. Why not be in debt to yourself? Why not just be in debt to yourself? And now, last year, they allowed me to take out the the CARES Act. Allowed me to take out a up to a hundred. I took out a huge uh, loan. Not even loan. What do they call it? I guess no interest, no penalty loan. I guess you would call it. Yeah. I paid off a bunch of debt. I'm like, I, I would much rather be in debt to myself than to somebody else if you're gonna yeah. use it. So. Yeah. Yeah. All I mean, right. That, that brings up a good point. Even on the solo 401k. So I'm gonna try to explain this in the simplest way, but me personally, as well as the business that I own and run both contribute every year to my 401k. Say that again, Chris. Yep. So myself as a W2 employee in the company that I own. So I am a S corporation of which I am the only member and I am an employee of that. I can contribute up to, as I just said, up to $58,000 a year. And that's based on my earned income. So you got to you gotta declare a lot of earned income to be able to contribute that much. But you can. And, Chris, that's 58000 not 5800 Oh, yes. You're doing a 401k. 401k, yep. Sorry. And that's in 2021 is the maximum contribution, the maximum annual contribution. But here's where it's cool. A lot of money. Good a lot of money that you can contribute, right? And it's it's a percentage of your earned income. So you can't you can't contribute more. They have it. They have it set. Yeah, it's a percentage of your earned income. Um, but the cool part with the solo four hundred one k is let's let's just say my solo four hundred one k has fifty thousand dollars in it. I can actually borrow. My business can borrow from Chris's four hundred one k up to 50% of what's in there as long as Chris's company agrees to pay his retirement 3% over the next three years. Sweet. So I'm actually, so I'm contributing to my 401k. My business is doing an employer contribution on top. And then I can go borrow that money from my retirement as long as I and my company agree to pay back my retirement 3% over the next three years. So hence again, you're in debt to yourself. You're in debt to yourself. Yep. Man, these fools have been doing this. This stuff pisses me. I'm like, these dudes have been doing this stuff, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> the, the deck is stacked, y'all. We are pulling back the curtain. Yep. I was listening to one of my books today. It's like, man, no one knows what's behind the veil of death, right? No one knows. Guys, we're showing you what's behind the veil of wealth. This is what these dudes been doing, right? They are not paying taxes to the government. I promise you, dude. Once you get a certain level, it's like, just imagine if you just all your stuff was in your IRA, Chris. You just, I mean, it'd be crazy. You got no taxes, so yeah, I love it being in debt to myself. It just sounds good. Yeah, I mean, I will say I don't mind taxes because if I'm if I'm paying taxes, that means I'm earning money, earning and money. it also means I can contribute more. To my retirement contributions. Yeah, maybe I should do more contributions. I need to do more of that, man. Yeah. Well, Chris, you don't got to worry about kids' college accounts and Coverdells and. Yeah, you can stuff. self-direct all of that stuff. I forgot about that. So roundup. Yeah, we have my kids have. I've got these. I need. To, I haven't set up Preston yet. It is on my list to do. Mm -hmm. Coverdells IRA, same thing. I got notes with men around my town out of my kids' college accounts. Right, they pay monthly fees. I'm sorry, monthly loan payments to the notes that we have. So, Chris, did you know that uh, when I first started my IRA, I think the con max contribution was like two grand. Yeah, when Back I started, it was five uh, fifty five hundred. On your on your four hundred one k. Yeah, on no, those Roth. Oh, you were okay. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, four hundred one k. I've only had for a year and some months. Mm -hmm. so that's really new to me. Yeah. No. How long you had your IRA? 
my Roth since I was about 25, 26. Okay, so maybe about, Mount about 000. 18 years. Yeah, just, okay. Maybe Mount was 4,000. I probably had the SEP since about 2015, so about five or six years. Roundup, I'm with Chris Birch. I know this stuff might sound a little blah, but wealth is boring. In and of itself, wealth is boring. All wealth is is getting cash flow every month passively. You don't got to do nothing for it. Right? Income streams. It is boring. We're trying to set you up so you can have a boring life. The, just like rent comes in every month. Boring. No one wants to see me go collect rent or see the direct. If I just showed you the direct deposits in the bank for rent and the cash out, people paying this rent, there's no entertainment in it. Everybody wants to see flipping. I yeah. promise you, this is where the real true wealth is. This IRA is self-directed. Go ahead, look into it. All right, so the gang's tax-free. Did we cover that? What else am I doing? We're loaning it out. You could set up other people's Roths, set them up. They can loan money to your company. Now, when they loan you money, you don't have to, th their profit goes in their IRA. You don't have to put the money in their IRA. You get to keep that money. So at least consider that, okay? Anything else you want to go over, Chris, before we get to questions? I will give you one last point, and I'm not promoting one or the other, but I do know when you're dealing with real estate, the solo 401k is not um, subject to UBIT or UDI. Was it U UDFI or UBIT? Unrelated business income tax. Exactly. The solo 401k is not subject to that when you're dealing with leveraged real estate, but the traditional IRA is. Yeah, self-directed is too. Yeah. Yeah. If you're leveraging real estate, you got to pay UBIT. Yeah. Unrelated business income tax, but I don't know how much it is. What is it? 8% or something, Chris? I don't something know. Like that. Yeah. Something like that. So. Okay. Roundup. Get your IRA game up. If you're sick and tired of saying, I don't have the money, you can approach people that have capital. I promise you, they're probably getting 1% wherever they're at. Wherever it is, is not much. Mm -hmm. You walk in the door, you're giving them 7 8%. They mm -hmm. are going to love you. Yep. But you got to know how to set it up in order for you to get them to loan you the money, okay? Uh, Jamal says, the traditional way sucks. Yeah. David wants to know, is the funding grow for short term because of the 12-month term? Chris knows more about that. So I would say, I, I'm not going to say yes, it's only for the short term, but the benefit of funding grow is within the first six to 18 months, you are not going to be paying interest on those lines of credit. So yes, it would be more beneficial in the short term. As far as uh, uh, another alternative for long term, Maybe a traditional line of credit with a bank, but you know, I'm not promoting that because it's going to be a pain in the butt to go through it. Yeah. Um, it's just you know that as well as getting your self-directed IRA or 401k, get that set up. Find out what the maximum contribution you can make in, I guess, because no one's filed their 2020 uh, taxes yet. Mm -hmm. Find out what you can do to set it up and get that money in those self-directed accounts and start distributing those those funds and using them. You might be able, I mean, if you're able on a, on a uh, self-directed IRA to contribute $6,000, um, yeah. that could be a down payment. Yep. You know? Get it in there. And you can do it on steroids. I know people that have purchased self-directed Roth IRAs that are already seasoned. Mm-hmm. You know, but I, I'm not going to go there right now. I'm just letting y'all know that so much creative stuff out here. Yeah. Right? Uh, oh, what is the alternative? Oh, he already answered that. Yeah. What up, Healing? How you doing, my friend? Pastor. Hey, Kenneth. Uh, don't Chris, don't you need to show cash flow in your bank account? Cash flow. He must be talking about fund and grow, maybe. I don't know. I didn't submit any bank information when I did it. No, I mean, you wouldn't need to present cash flow because they can approve your line of credit even if your business isn't set up yet. They're That's gonna, right. They're going to help you set the business up so you wouldn't have to show any 
any cash flow. That's crazy. You're right. You wouldn't even have it. They don't even care. Yeah. Can I did I just... have a comment yesterday or the day before um, that uh, they asked him for a Dun and Bradstreet number. Yeah. I had no experience. They didn't ask me for one. I just, you know, throw it out there. Someone mentioned that, that they did ask them for their Dunn's number, but that, that's not my experience. They didn't ask me for mine. Gotcha. Kenneth, if you're talking about bank statements for cash flow with self-directed Roth IRAs and 401ks, doesn't even exist. Nobody's going to care anything about that. Uh, low empress for fund and grow. What about new business owners, Chris? Yep, new business. They'll help you set it up. It's so once again, not to repeat ourselves too much. Okay. The, the approval on funding is based on your personal credit. It will not show up on your personal credit, but your funding, your approved amount of maximum funding, is based on your credit worthiness. That means you know how to manage and pay down debt, and you know. Yep. Uh, good question. Good question. And none of that matters on the uh, on the self directed side. Let me give a quick commercial, Chris. Roundup. I'm opening up today. The foreclosure summit will be February 13th. All day with me. I'm going to show you how to locate, research, bid, win, close on your next foreclosure auction house. Okay. All online foreclosure summit. And my boy Bill Brunchick will be coming on to kind of go over some of his take and how to teach uh, the right of redemptions and all that stuff. We're going to be covering A to Z, all about foreclosures in this coming crazy market that I first see that will be here. We don't know when it's coming. Chris, when do you think it's coming? Or do you think it's not coming? A lot of people are saying, man, it ain't going to be like 2008. It's going to be a lot smoother. I'm hearing a lot of that. I've heard that statement as well, that it's not going to be as reckless as it was in 2008. Mm -hmm. Uh, on what level is it going to come? I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be heavy, but I think there is going to be in the foreseeable future, as soon as they relieve these, um, as soon as they allow these institutions to start pursuing the foreclosures, yeah. trust and believe if you're in default now, they're just stacking up paper on you. They're just waiting, waiting on that green light. So they come in and pounce. They're waiting on it. A lot of people are like, you know what? I'm done with this house anyway. I just want to move on. Same as 08. They're going to get paid three times. Oh, they, the insurance. Well, not only that. So the, your lender, your mortgage company got paid when you put down your, your initial uh, down payment, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to get paid when they foreclose on it and sell it. And they're going to get paid again when someone else buys it. Wow. They're going to get paid three times. They're, they're licking their chops. Criminal, yep. Chris. Yep. But I want us to be round up. I want you to be in the position to take advantage of these foreclosures, right? But in order to do that, you got to know how the hell you how, how do you bid on these homes. That link is in the video description to get signed up, y'all. Uh, Derek, the, the, the income can be spent until you retire in an IRA, in an IRA, correct? It can't be spent. No. So if you if your IRA grows, if you're if you're seeing a gain in your IRA. You can still access those mo that money. You're going to be taxed on it when you pull it out, though. Yeah, and penalty, penalty, penalty too. And penalty, yeah, yeah. So, Derek, here's the thing: uh, you look like you're a young man. As you get older, you're going to have to just train. For me, I had to train my brain. I'm like, I opened up my IRA up because I knew I didn't have the muscle to have a bank account that I wouldn't touch. So, with the IRA, if you stick it in there, you cannot. You just forget about it until it's investing time. When it's investing time, you always have money to invest. Always, right? So it's by default. It, it, it kind of builds you that mu um, muscle memory to say that I am an investor. These funds are for investing only. I will not touch them. All right. So the IRA does a lot more than just kind of, it, it does a lot mentally for me. A lot of this metaphysical stuff kind of really moves me around, pulls me towards success. Because before, I'm like, I ain't doing no IRA. I'm getting my, I need my money. Uh, Robbie. Hey, hey, Candace, how you doing? Robbie wants to know, do you pay capital gains tax in the IRA and 401k? Any gain that grows within your uh, 401k? No. Tax free, y'all. 
on the gain side. Now, if your contributions are taxed, gains are not taxed. All right, got to remember that. And we don't even do contributions, really. So your example earlier on, when you said, I partnered with my IRA on that house, right? So 50% of that deal would not pay tax, which would be Chris's IRA. And then the part that Chris as a personally gained from that property, he would pay capital gains. There you that go. Makes sense. Yep. You're absolutely right. I did have to pay. Yep. And you yep. turn in that stuff because your IRA does get a tax ID. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jay Trevor, is the summit only to purchase or bid on auction properties, or will this be to teach how to buy creatively using creative financing? No, only how to go to the auction. I'm charging y'all. It's not free. It's a few dollars. I'm going to show you to go to the auction and bid on these houses. Okay. Uh, teach how to buy creatively. I'm not doing any creative financing on this foreclosure auction. Okay. Good question, Trevor. Yeah. I'm telling you how to, cause for me, as I'm looking back in 2008, oh God, I wish I, I didn't even know how to do this stuff when the last thing crashed. Now that I know, I get to deploy that tool, right? Derek, if a house is more than six, if if a house is more than six thousand dollars contribution limit, how can I? How can it go into the IRA? Good question. If a house is more than six thousand dollars contribution, oh, so he's still here. He's yep. here. All right, so. The maximum contribution, which means when I'm working my job and I pay taxes, I can avoid some of those income taxes by contributing $6,000 to my retirement account, my IRA. If the IRA invests in a house, it could sell for a million dollars and the balance would go back into your 401k tax deferred or tax free. All of it. All of it, y'all. Yep. Derek, we got to uh, remember in real estate, you got the fence, right? I always like to teach on the fence. You got that fence. If you do it this way, it could be taxed a certain way. If you do it that way, it could not be taxed. Your gain is on the right side of the fence. Your contributions are on the left side. If you take money out of your pocket and put it in there, that's a contribution. If it comes from a deal or a transaction, it's a gain, my friend. Okay? Just think about it like that. Al, what's up, my boy? Al Entrepreneur. What are the benefits of having an EIN for your self-directed Roth IRA or 401k? Most suggest keep it as a pass-through. You're going to get one whether you want it or not. Yeah, <laughs> gonna give you yeah you're going to get one because that's the only way they can set up the entity to create a bank account. You can track it. They yeah. got to be able to track it, Al. Yeah. And we don't have a bank account, but do you, uh, Chris, did you know... Let me tell you this. When I first started out with my IRA, we just yeah. used the we used everybody used equity trust companies EIN. Oh wow. Can you imagine how many that was crazy. Yeah. And well, then over um, because they were managing, in a sense, they were managing yeah. your money. Yeah. So over time they rolled out I, uh EINs for all of them. So Al, you have no choice. They are going to print out, and it's not like just say, for instance, if your 401k bought a house, you would report that on your taxes. Like when I do my tax returns, right? It shows Chris Haskins 60% and this other entity 40%, you know? So it's right there on, on the tax returns. You can't run from the man. Our yeah. uncle is Chris, likes to call him. Marianne, hey, get your questions in. Oh, that is my dilemma. I'm looking to move from my current custodian, oh man, to one that has check writing privileges. Good yeah. topic here, Chris. Yeah. That's exactly, that's exactly what I did. Um, the custodian that I use is Directed IRA. They're based in Arizona. And uh, I did everything online. The only thing I had to do in person, they did. They set up all the doc, docs for me. They initiated the rollover out of my um, the SEP IRA that I had. They initiated the rollover for that. Um, I'm, excuse me. I'm, I'm misstating that. That was not directed IRA. That was Millennium Trust that did okay. roll over. Because okay. I, as I said before, you can't roll over a SEP into a 401k. But my traditional SEP, I rolled it over into a self-directed IRA where I distribute that into a real estate uh, investment trust. Gotcha. Yeah. So Good Millennium course. Trust, I can't remember the website. Just search them. They're somewhere in the Midwest. Marianne, you have a good problem. Yep. I'm telling you, the problem having money is a problem. I know what to do with it. Right? Can't spend it. Timothy, how you doing? Making possibilities happen. I like that. 
I have an a direct IRA. I'm presuming, Chris, you think he's talking about self-directed? Probably, yep. Of only forty five thousand, only you're doing good. Uh, how can I position myself to increase that number by helping other rehabs? Shoot, shoot me or Chris an email. Yeah, I do, love, dude. If I was you, I'll get that money open working with other guys like Chris or me. Yeah. But put that money into our deals, dude. Put that money into the deals. Boom, put it out. Get a rate of return. Get it back. Get it working. Uh, exercise that muscle. Yeah, because if you use it, you know you got forty five thousand. I don't know what you do full time, but it's 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 not the easiest thing. I will tell you to use it on your own deals. A lot of well, you have to be careful on how you use it because you cannot be the contractor. You can't yeah. be the guy run into that property every day managing that project. You cannot. You mm -hmm. just can't do that. It's it's, it's considered a um, self deal. Yeah, self dealing, but it's considered a prohibited, prohibited. transaction. Yeah. Healing through inspiration. What up? Isn't this like life insurance? Yes. Life insurance, they call this the little brother. So the life insurance bills cash value and then you can borrow from it, pay, uh, what is it? Pay interest to your life insurance. Yeah. That is another level, another layer. That is true. So uh, I was reading a book, the and somebody mailed me a book, the and asset. They said life insurance was the big brother, self directed IRAs and 401ks are the little brother. So. So we're here with life insurance. You're going to have to be chunking money in there before you can get any out mm -hmm. with yourself. Direct. Right. You could wholesale a deal. I, I can't tell you how many deals I've wholesaled in my, you got, just think about this, y'all. You got your IRA, right? Let me do this. This is what's going to blow your mind. How do we get, this is how I got my money, my IRA loaded fat with money, right? Uh, say, stay with me, y'all. Say you got a house under contract. This you're gonna love this. You got a house under contract, right? Ninety thousand. The earnest money deposit is a hundred a hundred dollars, right? Stay with me. This is gonna blow your mind. Earnest money deposit is a hundred dollars. The IRA would fund the earnest money deposit, so it would be the one hundred percent owner of that contract. Okay, I got it for ninety k, and I sell that house. For a hundred thousand. So my profit is what? Ten thousand, right? I got it in the contract for a hundred. I mean, for ninety. I got a hundred dollars coming out of my uh, IRA. I sold it for a hundred thousand, which means I collected a ten thousand dollar EMD. This EMD goes in, you're talking about tax free. This EM, this $10,000 goes back into the IRA, tax free. You do a few of those, but you don't have to do it all. You can do 50 50, 75 25. So I, I used to have uh, earnest monies. I would have 50, I would take $50 in and then the IRA would mail in 50. Man, I have done deals where my custodian, my kid's college account mails in $30, my wife's IRA is mailing in $30. You know, you can max, mix and match this stuff to all types of ways. So you got that earnest money. That's all you need. That's all you need to come out. And then you got a big old assignment fee coming back in there. You're talking about raising up the value of your IRA quickly, quickly, y'all. As opposed to doing all these contributions. I mean, that's stuff. Uh, foreign language. Yep. You still got to listen. I, I, healing, I admire you for listening because this is not uh, something that's regularly talked about. You know, it's funny, Chris. What? I first, now I was searching for it. I didn't know what I was searching for. But you, imagine like those little emojis where, where your head explodes. Uh huh. That's where I was. When I saw it, I had to watch it a couple times. You know, I had to. But I was like, Oh my God, you can do that? That's what these guys have been doing all this time. Unbelievable. Which part was more most exciting for you, Chris? At the time, it was trying to avoid as much taxable income as possible. So I was which, looking, right? Which, was, which, which you owe it to yourself and your family, by the way. Don't feel, I don't want anybody to feel like they need to pay more taxes. No, I was trying to avoid as much personal liability that's when i found it and 
the head explosion moment was <laughs> when I saw that I could self-direct it and whatever gain it returned went back in tax-free. And I'm like, go. that's what these guys have been doing. Tax-free, yep. yep. That's right. Bro. Welcome to the world of real estate and the wealthy. No justice. What is your advice to get personal property out of your name? That's simple. I think it's real simple. I would recommend going back on Chris Haskins channel, searching for land trust. Yep. Chris has a series on that. Probably got you know a link in the description for the document. When I tell you it's one of the simplest things you'll ever do, all you need to do is find a title company that'll transfer that property out of your personal name into the name of the land trust and you're done. Which is probably the trust itself is the easy part. Yeah. Finding someone who understands how to do it is the hard part. That's true. That's true. Because these fools act like, oh, you can't do that. Oh, no, you can't do that. What are you doing? Right. No justice. Get that stuff out of your name, man. Uh, old school funk. Oh, man. Thank you, my friend. Thanks for opening up powerful content. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks for coming here. Old school funk. The rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, Marion, can you self-direct the repayment terms on the loan from the IRA or is there a set time frame? Self-direct the repayment terms. Yeah, you could set up an agreement similar to what Chris was just saying. He has rental properties that are in the name. So he set up an agreement between his his IRA and the tenant at his property that the tenant agrees to pay his IRA X amount of dollars every month. Yep. Yeah, you can do that all day long. Yep. So, Marion, that's why I love this stuff. You set the terms. You come up with the down payment. You make a decision of do I want? I'm telling you, we do the, the terms we set up. There, there are no payment. Why am I bending down? There are no payment loans, Marion. So, you can do quarterly payment. You can do annual, biannual, yearly. I mean, it's up to you. You set the daggone terms. That's why we're doing this. So we don't have to worry about the bank telling us what to do. Mary is with uh, Chris. I'm with Equity Trust. Okay. Cool. Another self. Another. Uh, they were the only game in town when I started. Iris, I'm in San Diego. Will my course teach virtual investing? No. Sorry. I'm just being honest. I'm going to teach you how to go down to the courthouse. Oh, you could get that stuff from the other virtual guys. I don't I don't know that stuff. I'm going to show you how to go to the courthouse and bid on these houses. Timothy, uh, send you the email. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's fine. How can I? Oh, Chris, how do people get in touch with you, my friend? Uh, right there in my name, chrisbirch.biz. Just fill out the little form. Um, yep. It'll go straight to my email. Yep. There you go. Same for me. I'm chrishaskins.com. Round up uh, <clears throat> with Chris Birch talking about IRAs, 401ks, funding, grow, getting business lines of credit. That link is in the video description as well as my foreclosure sum. But it's here, y'all. All day with me, February 13th, 12 to 5. And you're going to get um, information about foreclosure from my boy, attorney Bill Brunchick. The uh, registration starts today. Early bird registrations ends. Registration ends next week. Um, what is it? All day, step by step, how to go find and buy foreclosures. There's an upcoming real estate downturn. It's got to be coming. It's got to be coming. What else is it? Uh, Roan Mac, will we be able to review? Yeah, this will be online. The foreclosure summit will not. Yes, this will be up. Uh, started. Gerald, I started with my first first property two years ago and have bought up to my third. Good for you in December. Good for you, Gerald. Married equity trust here. Money just been sitting there. Oh, it sounds like you need to get that stuff working. Yeah. Get that stuff working. I want to know how I can buy homes faster doing BRRR. I don't know if doing that with the IRA because if you bought it in the IRA and then you refinanced it, yeah. Chris, you know, it's above me. Yeah, I don't know how. If he's talking about doing it in an IRA, I'm not sure. Um, but if it's just a general question is how can I buy houses faster? Um, 
Look at more deals. Wait for this economic downturn. You see, there's there's a time to buy and there's a time to hold tight. Time to buy and hold tight. Now, I'm not saying you can't buy right now, but we're all overpaying, everybody, from coast to coast, whether you're buying in wholesale or retail. So don't feel bad if you haven't this and you're not there out there doing a bunch of deals. You got three rental properties, Gerald. Some, you know, most people have none. Yeah. So pat yourself on the back. Okay, roundup. Listen, IRAs, self-directed 401ks, fund and grow. That link, if you want to see about the business lines of credit, business credit lines, it's in the video description, as well as registration for the foreclosure summit. Thank you for joining us tonight. Chris, final thoughts on my roundup homies trying to get into creative financing. Yeah, man, just go back. Um, look on Chris's channel. There's a, a ton of information on how to do that, um, different strategies of how to do it. Um, but he and I just thought, you know, it'd be good content to share with you guys from our own experience. Yep. Right? I'm not an attorney. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm teaching and sharing with you how I've done it and how it's worked for me as well as for Chris. Yeah, yep. I appreciate that. OK, Roundup, listen, make sure you subscribe. I'm gonna get a new. I'm gonna get a new. Uh, what's it? You gotta, you, you gotta get a uh, like a styrofoam version of that, where you can hold it up. Did you hear that thing? That thing is a thud. I think it helps me get subscribers. Round up. We're passing seventy-five thousand subscribers. I am honored that you guys let me pour. Y'all let me pour into you. We're gonna hit a hundred thousand this year. I will get the play button, and it's all thanks to you. Thanks to you. So I want to say from the Haskins family, thank you. Y'all give me something to get up in the morning for because my kids around here, they crazy. They crazy. No dad, just pushing them. Yep. Like the content, share with any other investor that needs to learn this stuff to build some wealth, build their real estate empire. This is how you do it. Forget the banks. Now you can go... Uh, get a few loans here and there, but these banks ain't going to help you build an empire. They don't care. They're worried about their numbers. Okay. So the way you do it, creative financing, business credit lines, IRAs, 401ks, private money. Okay. This is another leg to private money. Get registered up for the foreclosure summit in the video description and see how much you qualify for as well in the video uh, description below with Fund and Grow. Um, let me see. Let me leave, leave you with this. The summit next weekend. Get registered up. Round up. I'll see you guys soon. Chris, thank you, my friend. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. All right. Peace.